okay <coughs> um so in the last class we have been talking about the shifting of weights from um one side of the vessel to another by a small shift if there is a small shift of w of d0 of a small mass what will be the distance through which the center of gravity of the whole ship will shift now we come to a new type of effect that we call as the free surface effect now this in your course of study here you will see free surface effect used to denote two two things means two different things which are both are called by free surface effect um that is one is free surface effect as you see it in hydrostatics here that we are going to do then you will see another free surface effect that will come in your uh, marine hydrodynamics which professor sen will be teaching you he will be teaching you and professor sahu they will be teaching you about um, waves and all that there another free surface effect comes i'll tell you what the two things are first of all let's let me tell about what they are talking about free surface effect means the effect of um the air sea interface means uh, you have we have talked about a water line we have so when you have a ship we talked about a water line so in general this has a movement of its own this is a water line this is the surface of water that has a movement of its own for example when a wave passes through it so when a wave passes okay you the free surface will become like this this will become like this it's not a straight line now when we were studying the effect of this means what is that speed with which the wave is moving what is the displacement of this free surface from the mean position like that that study is called as free surface effect in their terminology so that is their free surface that comes actually in waves and um hydrodynamics uh, that uh, marine hydrodynamics so now what we are doing is a free surface effect that we talk about in hydrostatics which is different from that very but not very different that is the meaning here is when you say when you are studying the free surface effect what you are doing here is suppose you have a tank in a ship means okay let me draw a um okay let me draw a ship like this now suppose that there is a tank in the ship means this much is a tank okay um now in that tank let's suppose there is some liquid for example you can have oil tankers which carry oil they will have huge tanks in fact they have only tanks mostly only tanks and they carry oil in it or ordinary ships itself will have in it huge tanks which will carry ballast water i have already told you what is ballast water taking in and leaving out of water for going up and down so uh, that that is also having a tank of its own um so these things you will have something that is you will have a tank which is not fully filled with water so that means you will have a free surface of liquid that pros that situation where you have a free surface of liquid in a tank inside a ship is known as a free surface effect in hydrostatics so it is actually a free what a uh, free liquid surface or a liquid surface in a tank inside the ship you have to note that if the tank is completely filled with um completely filled with the fluid what is the difference the difference is that you won't have this movement of free surface it will be fixed so it will be just like a solid it doesn't make any difference that liquid becomes just like a solid and it moves with the ship only there is no there is no separate motion of its own but if it is not filled this free surface will move like this and it has a effect of its own on the ship's stability so that is what we are going to look at next that is what we are meaning by uh, free surface effect okay now let us see what that is so let us look at a um, cross section of the ship this is a cross section and let us suppose that in this ship in this cross ship there is a tank like this uh, it doesn't matter where it is but let's put it here and this is the center of the ship and uh, you have here g g0 the initial center of gravity and this tank is now filled up to this height with some liquid uh, and let us say that the center of gravity of this liquid is a small g0 and it has a small weight it has a weight equal to small w and the capital w represents the whole displacement of the ship which is tank plus everything in the ship the whole displacement of the ship 
small w represents the weight of the water alone. Let us call it water for time being. It can be oil also, it does not make any, it only differences in that row that we will see. Then um, the um, center of gravity of that small water body is G0, small G0 and capital G. Then this center of gravity, center of buoyancy is B0 and let us put the meta center here M. So, these are the, uh, now what happens? Let us suppose that the ship heals, the ship inclines. Now, this will also move on its own, means first of all the ship will incline, let us say like this. Now, this body will also, this, uh, this surface of water will no longer be horizontal, it will start, uh, it will move in its own. Now, let us draw that figure. W1 L1, this is W0 L0. Now, initially, so here you have this tank, it has its G0 and now it is, because of that inclination, this is like this now, okay, the water surface is like this and because of this, you see that more water is there on the right side. So, G, is, G of that water body will shift to the right. So, this will be G1, let us say. Okay. This is just the G of that water body, that is small g, always represents the of that small water mass alone. So, that is small g. Now, let us say that, so this becomes, in, if you think of it, if it, it has really become similar to that problem we did of shifting of mass, that is this small weight w, that is the weight of that water is actually shifted from G0 to G1. It is almost similar to that problem. Now, what has happened? Let us say that G0 is its capital G0 is the initial center of gravity of the whole ship. Now, because of a weight shifting, G0, this will shift to here, G1. Okay. And uh, here, this will be the vertical. Okay. This will be the vertical, and uh, let this be GV. Then Um, so, this figure is very much like that of a center of buoyancy shifting and the meta center. So, you have G1 and GV, okay. Um, that is um, similarly, um, okay, that figure explains it. Now, let us derive the expression, okay. Now, let us do one thing. Let us assume that in this derivation, this is a box, it makes the derivation simple. We will do it for general later, but Sim first of all, let this be a box. We have already said box shape barges. So, this is one of those and uh, because of that and let us call the distances as, um, let us say that this distance is b, small b. Now, so this, what will be this distance? This distance I mean. This G0 is b by 2, it will be at the center, right. G0 is the center of gravity of that water body. So, B0 is the, uh, B is the uh, breadth of that tank. Now, G0 is the position of that, we are talking about the horizontal position only we are talking about right now, forget the vertical movement. So, that G0 is initially at the center because it is it's a um, rectangular box and water is like this means it will be at the center only. So, this is G0. So, it is initially let us say 0 or it will be in this case B by 2 exactly at the center and what will be G1, the distance of G1 from the center. Now, what do we have? We have the small wedge that has moved to the right side. Now, what do we have to find? We have to find the center of gravity of this triangular wedge therefore, it is 2 by 3 B by 2. Okay. So, um, this di uh, is it clear or should I okay uh, it is anyway it is the same problem that we did uh, um, means like this see we took this whole wedge we took this wedge we found the center of gravity shifting the only thing is in this case we are just taking the small region this small region so it is this wedge has shifted to this side so one wedge has one side has come down one side has gone up so g has shifted so, this is this distance is 2 by 3 b, no 1 by 2 by 3 b by 2. Okay. 
that is the distance. Now, with this figure here, this figure we need, let me derive things here. Okay. That is, first of all, uh, what is G0, G1? I will just write the value, then if you want, I can explain it. Is that clear? Because this we have explained many times, that is, this is the value of G0, G1, which is the moment of, that is, what do you have here? We have a small mass, small w, inside a huge, the whole mass, capital W. When that small mass is moved at distance d, we have seen that the moment of the center of gravity of the whole system is small w into d divided by whole weight. So, that is what this is. G0, G1 is the distance through which the center of gravity of the w has shifted. So, w into G0, G1 by capital W. So, that is, um, now we can write this, okay, this is obvious, volume of that wedge into rho of that water. Okay, weight of that is okay. Actually, they are talking about mass, not weight. So W is equal to G, uh, v into rho i. Okay, now what is v? V is this volume of this wedge. What is the volume of the wedge? Volume of the wedge is area of the triangle into the length. Now, what is the uh, area of the triangle? Is half base into altitude. Base is b by two into altitude is b by two tan phi. Note one thing, what will happen is that um, the ship is like this okay? uh, and the surface of that, what there is tank here and there is a liquid inside that, that liquid, that surface is also horizontal, it will be, it will be horizontal because if the ship is horizontal, this will also be horizontal. Then it tilts like this, uh, in this case, yes, it tilts like this. Then what will happen is that this will also tilt in the same fashion. Therefore, it will tilt by the same degree as the surface as you can just look at this figure means this angle is phi. Similarly, this angle will also be phi. It is as it is both are similar. Okay. Therefore, what I am saying is this if this distance is b by 2, this distance is b by 2 tan phi because this angle is phi, this is b by 2 tan phi, b by 2 tan phi divided by b by 2 that is tan phi into the uh, length l therefore weight on and tan phi because we are talking about small angles we replace it with phi so for therefore the weight small w is equal to l into b square by 8 phi into rho i okay rho i is the density of that fluid let's call it water it's therefore equal to 1000 kilogram per meter cube that is your um, that is the weight of that fluid that is being transferred, then you have uh, G0, G1 is already given, it is equal to, um, now what is G0, G1? G0, G1 is, um, it is 2 by 3, um, 2 by 3 into B by 2, yeah, B by 3. Now, um, that is, this is, G now what is actually here, um, we are trying to find out the movement of the mass, <coughs> means here, actually I made a small mistake here, um, that is, uh, this is, this G0 is actually, uh, let us, if let us call this G0, let us call this G, small g2, okay. Now, what is small g2, I will tell you, that is, um, see, initially you had, so what are we saying, we are saying that, what uh, initially this wedge, uh, initially the system is at G0, okay, because the, the fluid is at G0, the center of gravity is at 0. Now, it because of this shift, it looks as if a small weight, it not looks, looks as if, that is actually a small weight has been lost here and a small weight has been gained here. It That is how it is. The weight lost is at, is at a distance minus G1 to the left, the weight gained is at a distance G1 to the right the center of gravity of that. Is that clear or should I repeat that? That is, G0 is a center where you have the center of gravity of the initial water body which is, there is center. Now, 
because of that something comes down here something goes up here water comes down here water goes up here so a small wedge is lost here small wedge is gained here so one it's like this weight has been shifted there so from the center of gravity of this point it is moved to the center of gravity there that is the distance through which the weight has shifted right so minus g1 to g1 is the or g0 minus g1 to g0 g1 is the distance through which the body has the weight has shifted if this is not clear you won't understand this so if if, if you want i can repeat it it's not a problem do you understand it okay so um it'll be twice this means this is the distance through which the this this is not g0 g1 it should be 2 g0 g1 okay you have to clearly understand so this will be twice this into 2 so this will be 2b by 3 twice g0 g1 so uh, what you are checking is one weight is lost at one point and one weight is added at one point it's almost as if one weight has been transferred from one point to the another point it's the same thing here minus w here plus w so this weight is transferred from here to there so because of this weight the weight transferred is the weight both the volumes are the same otherwise you cannot do this problem it becomes very complicated one volume is different from the other volume means you have to do different other things we are not bothered about that right now this is a simple simpler case so a weight moves from this point to this point as a result it moves a distance of this 2 by 3 g uh, 2 by 3 b where b is this whole distance so through that distance the center of gravity has shifted this much distance horizontal distance okay horizontally that much distance has been shifted we are talking only about horizontal movements okay then you get that then um okay then let's just finish this calculus so w into um it becomes w into um 2g0 g1 2g0 g1 is 2b by 3 into into w w is l b square by 8 into phi into rho i um divided by is there anything else divided by w right yes. divided by w one minute um uh, yes what oh w is not that w is replaced by this yes correct that is equal to this and divided by w capital w so this will be the distance through which g0 g1 will shift capital g0 g1 <coughs> now we can do one thing here let's uh, simplify this 8 24 so this is 12 so this becomes lb cube by 12 into phi rho i divided by capital w capital w is the whole weight of the ship now look at lb cube by 12 what is lb cube by 12 it is a moment of inertia about that axis okay therefore let's call this i i phi rho i by w now of course it you might wonder is it true for other shapes as well means is it just for a rectangular box that it co coincidentally becomes a i or does it happen for all actually it happens for all shapes you will get i there so that we will see but this is simpler you can look at this and you can understand it very clearly so you get it as lb cube by 12 this which becomes lb cube by 12 i replaced by i which is the moment of inertia of that water plane about that longitudinal axis okay about the longitudinal axis now therefore g0 g1 is that um this is g0 g1 is equal to this that is once you have that now we can do one more thing g0 g1 let's look at this figure now g0 g1 okay this is a horizontal movement of g so this angle is 90 degree this is vertical and this is therefore horizontal 90 degrees now um um we can this angle will be phi if this angle is phi these are all geometry if it comes if this is phi you will see that this becomes phi therefore g0 g1 divided by g0 gv is equal to tan phi okay therefore g0 gv is equal to and which this let us write it as phi 
okay then g0 gv is therefore equal to g0 g1 by phi therefore this is g0 g1 divided by phi so you remove that phi this becomes i rho i divided by w actually there is no why this i is written i am not sure it's it's rho the density of that fluid uh, so you have this is g0 gv now i don't think that uh, derivation is given but g0 gv will be the actually the distance through which the center of gravity of the ship moves in the vertical direction of the ship now this liquid right what we are saying is no i looks confused but i'll tell you what this is that is see this liquid is moving like this okay when when that happens the center of gravity shifts both in the vertical and in the horizontal direction what we derived g0 g1 is the shift in the vertical direction uh, in the horizontal direction okay therefore we are finding out this shift in the vertical that we will come to later but just remember this expression g0 gv is equal to i rho i rho by w we will derive it then um, so actually this why is it called gv it's called a gv because it's called a vertic virtual center of gravity virtual center of gravity that is when the free surface of the fluid means when the ship is like this and the free surface is moving up and down like this that is the body is tilting like this inclining like this and because of this the water inside the tank is moving up and down like this because of that the center of gravity of this is going up and down okay now when that is happening the center of gravity of the ship also goes up and down so that movement can actually be represented by this gv okay um, then okay actually they have just written it here if you do the whole set of derivations for what is not a rectangular body and just a uh, arbitrary type of body actually you will end up like this okay 0 to l right yeah sir how does this uh, center of gravity move sir how does it move up okay. because the center of gravity of that uh, free surface is moving up and down sir, center of gravity no this is like this right this free surface is like this it moves like this free surface so its center of gravity moves up it's it's moved horizontally and it moves up also because something has come down here something has gone up there so its center of gravity moves up because the center of gravity of the free surface of the liquid moves the center of gravity of the ship moves because it has to move no yeah okay then so in this case you get um, v into that derivation if you want we can do the whole that is instead of that lb cube by 12 it will become like this okay it it's it doesn't matter just uh, you can take this formula for granted that is g0 gv is equal to i uh, capital i into rho divided by w so this gives you the distance through which the center of gravity moves in the vertical direction and we have before expression that gives how the center of gravity moves in the horizontal direction g0 g1 i rho phi by w that is obvious because g0 g1 by g0 gv is just phi or tan phi tan phi is phi in this case so this is one thing all right then um, we can do uh, one, some simplified cases we'll do it here that is um, two things you have to notice it's uh, interesting actually because um, this movement of the center of gravity is actually you are seeing it depends upon i note one thing this is not i of the ship let me see where I derived it here now you see this is l b cube by 12 which is l is the length of the tank it can be the length of the ship also if it is the whole length of the ship the tank extends the whole length of the ship it could be the length but remember we uh, and this b is actually the breadth of the tank not the breadth of the ship so this l b cube by 12 represents the moment of inertia of the tank so here if you have the whole ship like this if you have the whole ship here the tank is just here this is the moment of inertia of this tank about this center axis this center axis 
you have the tank here about this center axis what is the moment of inertia this is the center line of the ship and this is the whole ship so you have a whole ship you have a small tank here you have the center line of the ship this is the center line of the tank itself so this is the moment of inertia of the small tank about its center line so that is now we can see one thing how does the uh, which are different ways for instance to uh, change this g0 now we have already seen gm is affecting the stability we have we know that because gm we know that gm has to be greater than 0 which implies that what is the best way you should have g as low as possible that means gm will be large m so let's suppose that m is fixed if g is as far down as possible then gm will be as large as possible and you will have maximum stability therefore our idea is to re reduce g kg as such okay we are trying to reduce kg now uh, in this figure if um, so i said according to this figure we have to reduce kgv means the distance between g and gv should be as minimum as possible that is our goal that should be one of our goals now what are different ways to do that now g0 gv is now depending upon i therefore what are we trying to see we are trying to find out different ways to reduce i because we want to maintain the stability of the ship what we are seeing actually is that if you have a ship you have a tank in it you have a free surface in that tank if the ship heals and if it is while it is moving well while, while the ship heals of course there is a loss of stability because of the healing itself but because of the tank and that free surface effect there is an additional loss of stability than if the tank is not there so if the tank is there there is an additional loss of stability and that loss of stability it, let's see how we can minimize we cannot do away with the tank we need the water or we need the oil so we cannot do away with the tank so what are different ways of reducing that uh, reduction in stability how to improve the stability that what so what we can do is now what is i i in some ways can be written as lb cube by 12 now what we do is suppose that is we are looking from the top now okay let's suppose that this is a ship and let's say that tank is like this okay let me draw a big tank therefore you have a ship okay on that ship you have a large tank so what do you think is a partition it exactly what is a big way best way to do that that is what we do what we can do is we can partition these tanks exactly that is what they do so instead of having one large tank you can partition that tank what you see here is this how much will the i change i will become l into what has b now it will be let's say that it has divided into n okay n uh, compartments it becomes b by n so it becomes b by n cube by 12 now you have to sum up the i's to get the total i so you have to multiply with an n but still it is reduced many times it is b by n cube into n so it is yeah l b cube by 12 and there is an n square it's reduced n times n square times it's reduced n square times so this is this is known as longitudinal you know that this direction is called longitudinal so longitudinal subdivision longitudinal subdivision of the tank uh, of the whole tank if you divide it like this you are you end up with a very low value of i which implies that it does not affect your uh, stability so much now what will be the case if i divide the tank like this transverse what will happen no change. there is no change exactly it's because i will become what it will become l by n into b cube by 12 in into n right it becomes same thing so there is no point in transverse subdivision this is called transverse subdivision transverse we are talking only of the transverse swing of the ship what is longitudinal swing no 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 that the, we are not at all we haven't talked about or in fact we won't be talking mostly about longitudinal movement at all by longitudinal movement no it's just that it's not in that course that's all this is more in one of the reasons is that for one thing that is the co uh, this movement is not affecting stability so much that is see this length is very large a small movement like this or like this won't affect the ship it won't cause it to capsize and all you're talking we are talking about capsizing like this it's very rare chance so this is more important this when it tilts in a transverse section that is 
as I told you, what is this called? We already mentioned that trim. We called it trim. Now this movement we call it as heel or list. Okay. So heel is more important because since this distance is very less, very strong wind, for instance, when it hits like this, it it won't capsize it, but it can cause it to move very large, very large distance. So this we are only discussing transverse stability. Of course, there is a se separate section on uh, longitudinal stability as well, but it's there at the very end. If we have time, we'll do it. So this is more important. So only we are only talking about transverse um, movements, or these dis these movements are called heel, and such dynamic movements are called roll, which I've already mentioned. Dynamic movement means it keeps moving like this. This vibration vibration and vibration mode is called uh, rot roll. And just that static movement is called heel, means it's like this, it moves like this and stays there, it's called heel. But if it just moves like this, it's called rolling. That process is called rolling. That's what we are talking about. We are talking about healing right now, hydrostatics. Rolling actually comes in hydrodynamics. You know the difference between hydrostatics and hydrodynamics. Dynamics is about motion. It's about fluid motion and the result of that on the ship. And hydrostatics is about the effect of like pressure, forces. It's a static case, what happens just movement that's all it's not about continuous movement okay so this is a very important point actually in because again in your vivas they'll ask you this <coughs> means first question is what is free surface effect but more important than that these are kind of trick questions means this shows how you have understood the subject on that is this question why is it that you do longitudinal partitioning and not transverse partitioning what is the reason for it that's a very you, very common question in your job interviews and your uh, uh, it's like another question similar to this is they say for a submarine what will be your BM that's a common question again I, I told you about that that is BM we have seen that I becomes zero in that case so that when it is under the water and therefore that is uh, again zero that is one one of such problem one of the such questions this is another one why is the longitudinal partitioning so this is the reason okay you should remember this expression for i and uh, this is how it becomes by n square. In this case, uh, by n into n cancels out, there is no effect. Okay. <coughs> now, we have some two or three questions here, problems here that gives some understanding actually, this kind of problems. Um, that is, it says that um, a vessel has a dis uh, vessel has a displacement of ten thousand tons, so or um, You are given kg is equal to 8.9 meters. I mean, these are okay, and km is also given. Now, you are told that w uh, the vessel is now going to load ballast water uh, of some relative density into a rectangular tank, and the length of the tank is given, and the breadth is given, and the depth is given. Okay, so these three things are given. Now, they are sent, um, this tank is now divided into two or rather it is a double tank so it has a center line division into two it's divided into two tanks in the middle um, and you are told that the kg of ballast is equal to uh, something and um, you are asked to find the gm now it's sometimes mentioned like this they say find the fluid gm of the vessel the meaning of that is or fluid kg, it's any of these. The meaning is that in the presence of such a free surface effect, in the presence in provided that the tank has the fluid, what is the gm? What is the kg? Okay. This is the meaning of this fluid. So the question is to find the fluid gm of the vessel. Okay. Now, first of all, we can find the weight of the ballast. is given by the length of the tank into breadth of the tank into depth of the tank into the density of water. You do this, you will get the weight of the ballast. Then you are given the 
kg of the ballast. Now, what we can do is, so when you do this problem, you will see in the book it is written like this. That means, kg without the fluid just with the ship that is this and this is kg with the fluid. So, water is added that is ballast is added to the tank and then what you have is a kg of the fluid. Okay. So, now what we can do is make a small table. That is note that we need to find the kg of the ship with the fluid. So, we, you, we have already done many times how to find the kg of a complete system when you have two or three weights. So, first you have the weight of the ship itself let us call this um, weight of the ship and it has some kg. Uh, you, you do not need to do the problem here I will just explain it and you find the moment of that weight that is this just w into kg. So, that gives you this moment then you are given the weight of ballast. So, you put here the weight of ballast and you are given the kg of the ballast. Okay. The problem says you are given the kg of the ballast, then you find the moment due to the ballast, find the total moment, find the total weight and that will give you kg uh, as the moment divided by weight. Okay. This is the, um, actually this is the initial moment before the fluid has healed, is it this is given here? Wait. Um, okay, it's not specifically told, but you have to assume that otherwise there is there is nothing in this problem. So you have to assume that the ship has healed. Now this is the kg. Now in this case, the fluid is just added because of it because of it the kg has shifted and now the body is tilted inclined and because of because it's inclined its kg will move or i mean its g will move the free surface effect is happening of course free surface effect was there before also but it's inclined now and um, this because of this uh, free surface effect what will be g0 gv is the distance through which the center of gravity of the ship seems to have uh, shifted this n square represents the tank we have already seen how it comes it is a longitudinally divided we have already told in this exp example you have a whole tank it is divided into half in the middle so you have n equals 2 here so this is i into rho by w into 4 okay because n is 2 here it's divided into two sections um, now of course th these are the regions where you have to be careful you do not find the eye of the whole ship, you do not find eye of the water plane area of the ship, that is not what this eye represents. This represents the moment of inertia of the tank surface. Okay. This is the moment of inertia of the tank surface, I will keep it here. Um, so, that is just equal to Okay, we will just do that i is equal to it will be l b q by 12. Uh, so, this will give you the i of that surface. Note that b is the breadth of the tank, it is the total breadth of the tank because here means you have a tank like this, you have a tank like this, it is divided like this, and if this is b. Okay. Then, this should be B. Okay. You have to be careful. All these things, just go to, just remember the derivation. B by N comes because the whole B has been divided into N. That is why B by N came. Therefore, B is the total tank width, not the width of each compartment. B is the total tank width. So, um, or you have to do one thing. You have to find I of each tank and you sum it up. Uh, means, you multiply it with in this case there are two tanks you find the i of one tank you multiply it with two you will get i of the whole thing either way you do but just remember that this is i of the tank so this is lb cube by 12 into 1 by n square this will give you the i of that system 
then um, therefore then g0 gv will become um, this into this value i into rho by w so this will give you the distance through which the center of gravity seems to be shift, seems to have shifted the vertical distance through which it has shifted now here i'll ref a little a little change i'll make to what i said before that is i said that kg solid represents the um, weight of the ship without the fluid i'll make slight change to it it's not without the fluid completely what it is actually uh, kg with the fluid but without inclining means you there are two the other thing is also called kg solid so i'll, I'll re write it here so that there is no confusion so first you have the ship alone that is also kg it is 1 kg i mean it's this values will be different this is also a kg solid only but let's call it 1 then there will be ship plus the fluid that is also written here as kg solid let's call it 2 its value will change why because the new weight has been added so kg will shift down it will shift towards the water okay it will shift towards the keel then this is ship plus fluid healing means it is no longer in an upright condition it has healed in that condition what you get is what you call as kg fluid okay now here you have your initial kg and now you have your kg solid 1 um, that we have already calculated using that table like using this table we have calculated this kg this is kg solid 1 okay so that is calculated now you need to find kg no this is kg solid 2 sorry i'm confusing you is uh, kg solid 1 is actually just this this is it is just the ship alone okay the kg of the ship alone without the liquid being added to it is what we calling as kg solid 1 that is this now to it fluid has been added or water has been added at the bottom and still it remains upright it is not healing or anything it is remaining upright but water has been added then what happens therefore you have kg solid 2 and then it heals okay and it becomes a kg fluid okay so kg solid 2 we have already calculated how will you get kg fluid instead of this new g0 i mean the old g0 we replace it with gv so you get your so instead of g0m which we have which was initial it is actually gvm okay this will from this what kg you get is the kg fluid it's not equal to kg so you use your gvm you have to get um, that is you have g0gv so it's very simple actually to that kg solid if you add this g uh, 0 gv that will give you the distance through which kg has shifted up that will give you your kg fluid means it's very obvious that is so if this is the ship if this is your g0 this is your gv so this is k to k g0 if i add g0 gv you will get k gv which will give you the new position of the center of gravity of the ship by the presence of the healing of the fluid so this will give you kg fluid and from kg fluid if you want if the question is there you can find gvm okay the only thing you have to know is that this is the final position of your center of gravity because of the healing of the fluid once you know that then you just think i mean what is your new gm what is your new kg so your new kg is kgv your new gm is gvm so once you know that you can do this okay then okay now these are the kind of um, problems that you really come across in uh, when you are doing a, a real design that is you are given that uh, there is a there is just a double bottom tank okay there is a tank um, 
Now, they have given you the half ordinates of this tank. Okay, this is the second problem. So, you are given that um, right now we are not having a um, Okay. Now, you are given the half ordinates of the tank. So, okay. the difference in this problem is that this is not a rectangular tank. Okay. So, it becomes a little difficult to find the eye of the tank probably and um, um, yeah, it is just the problem in finding the eye of the tank. So, the um, it is actually, the, so what they are given is this, that is for that, for this tank, you are given the um, let us divide this in same way as stations and uh, half ordinates. Station, that means that you have this whole tank, long tank from the, let us say this is the aft of the ship and this is the forward of the ship. This is divided into stations. Okay. Now, you are going to divide this into stations. Uh, let us call start this from, maybe let us start from here itself. Station 0 to 1, 2, 3 and it is not a rectangular, Okay, it is it's some shape, it is a tank of some arbitrary shape and you are given the half ordinates, the meaning of half ordinates is this, Okay, these distances are given. So, from the center line, you are told what are these distances, remember it is not a rectangle as this figure shows, but it is a different y's are given, y 1, y 2 like this. So, these are the half ordinates, uh, so station 0, 1, 2 like that, you are given the different half ordinates. So, your problem is to find the same thing to find kg fluid. So, the only additional thing you have to do is you have to find the eye of this tank. That is the only additional problem. Um, actually, I probably should need not do this because we have already done a problem before to find the eye of a water plane area. Okay? That was for a ship, but this you must be knowing how to find the eye of this uh, tank because I have done half ordinate cubed. If you remember, I have done a half ordinate cube then I did a summation of the area of half ordinate cube. Um, if you want, I will write the table, but I actually it is we have done this. So, this is the way in which uh, we can make the table. This is a function of area. This becomes a half ordinate cubed. Simpson's multiplier is not needed again, but it's function of the moment, second moment. So you have like this stations. Now, half ordinates are given for each station. Okay, You are given these values. Simpson's multiplier we know. Okay, 1, 4, 2, 4 we are using. This is the first rule, Simpson's first rule. Then, um, now what is function of area? Function of area will be just this into this. I will write it if you want. 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 5, 6 and 7. Now, the fourth column of the table will be oh, okay. fourth column of the table will be um, second column of the table into third column of the table. Um, I mean we have explained this too many times, I think I will leave it. So, 4 is equal to 2 into 3. Then similarly, we have also derived the uh, moment of inertia. So, I will say that 7 is equal is going to be um, half ordinate cube that is 5 into 6. This is again 1, 4, 2, 4. This will be this thing cubed. It is actually 2 cubed. Okay. So, your um, um, column 5 will be column 2 cubed which is half ordinate cubed and when you do 7 is equal to 5 into 6 and then this will give you some i's, function of i's, 
then you will have to sum up that i okay you will have to sum up that whole thing and finally here you will get the i to be h by 3 into summation of function of i okay is that a, i think h by 3 is the distance between the stations and so what you are doing is you are actually summing up the i's lb cube by 12 in fact or integral of lb integral of b cube dl okay that you are uh, doing for each you are actually finding each l uh, b cube into dl and you are summing it up that dl is fixed as h here so that is that h by 3 and that is of course the summation so h by 3 into summation of function of uh, function of this i this will give you the i of the section i of that tank so uh, other than that it's exactly similar as a previous problem so it's okay i i won't repeat that so this is the thing you have to do we can kind of uh, combine the previous section with this section and make it look very complicated the problem look complicated but there are a couple of things if you know like these formulas whatever i have derived about the free surface effect has to be very clear you have that formula should be clear and you should know what each term stands for and once you know that then of course and another thing is you have to know all this you have to know how to find i's this way of finding i's using means not just the lb cube by 12 but finding i in case you are given an irregular shape okay you have to find you have to be able to find the i you have to be able to find the area in case of volume volume or the displacement so these three things that's all uh, area volume and display uh, moment of inertia so these three i you should be able to calculate it provided you are given the station and the half ordinate so once you are given the station and the half ordinate you should be able to calculate the i like this using this table once you have the i note that this i goes into that equation that's all this final value it's just one value of i for that whole tank about that central axis once you have that you just um, substitute it in, into the previous equation that is i by rho i into rho by w and the second that is the second part that is of course very straightforward and you get kg for the fluid okay and um, so what you are going to see is that um, when there is uh, such a case of adding a fluid means adding a fluid will reduce actually what is going to do is okay this is the net result that is when you add a fluid to a body in the in the ship uh, in a in the form of a tank in such a way that you do not completely fill the tank and leave part of it free then you end up with a free surface effect and uh, this effectively ends up reducing your gm because your g moves up so it it was initially like this you had your m here you had your g here because of this free surface effect g moved to this point gv okay as a result your gm is reduced it's now it's equal to just gvm which is less than your gm so your initial gm so you have uh, a lesser gm and there is condition for stability to be lost okay so and one way to change that is partitioning the tanks which will reduce your um, i which will reduce your uh, reduction in g okay uh, means it will prevent your g from going too far up so just know these things that is in a ship you should basically have your center of gravity as low as possible of course there is a other side to it we, actually that might come in the next class i mean you cannot have the g too far down there is another problem that will come up but in general from our study so far you have to conclude that g should be as low as possible when g is as low as possible gm will be as high as possible and your stability will be very high and you will be you'll be in a good condition okay the ship will be safe okay thank you